been working on a translation of the Udana, a series of short pieces where the Buddha witnesses an event or participates in an event. And it calls forth something spontaneous from him. He exclaims, usually a poem or sometimes a poetic piece of prose. And it's interesting to notice what kind of thing would make an awakened one exclaim spontaneously. And it comes down to two basic kinds of things. One is a sense of awe at the Dharma, how amazingly good the Dharma is, and how when people are trained in the Dharma, how amazing they become as well gives rise to a sense of confidence that this really is a good, a good path with a really good goal. The other thing that makes him exclaim is out of a sense of sangwega. He sees people behaving in ways that are really harmful for themselves and for the people around them, and they're so ignorant and so blind and so attached to what they're doing. And you have to remember his perspective, what he's coming from here is having, on the night of his awakening, not only attained nirvana, but he also saw how karma works in the world. You probably know the image of the, the ocean, that the tears that you shed going on through this long, long, long time of wandering on are more than the water in the ocean. You'd imagine what it would be like for someone who had actually seen that, and then turns around and looks at people doing their best to create more tears. It gives rise to a sense of strong sangwega. That's the, what the world looks like to someone who's awakened. And even though we're not awakened yet, or haven't achieve full awakening yet. It's good to keep in mind what the perspective of an awakened person is, so we can have the right perspective on our choices in life. And one of the reasons we're here meditating is that combination of sangwega and vasada, on the one hand, seeing how meaningless life can be, and how if we're not careful we can create a lot of suffering for ourselves. And then on the other hand, realizing that through the practice of the Dharma, something really amazing can be, be attained, a state of mind where the happiness is totally unshakable. There's a whole series of verses where he talks about how the, the mind of an awakened one doesn't quiver at all in response to either pleasure or pain. Totally solid. The happiness is, that can't be touched by anything else. That's what we're practicing for. In the case of the Buddha, he, the attainment that he achieved never lost its capacity to amaze. So try to keep both of these attitudes in mind. On the one hand, the Sangwega, looking at the world around us, looking at the way we've been living our lives. In some cases, the Sangwega the Buddha expressed had to do with lay people sometimes with people from other sects arguing over totally useless matters. This is where the, the image of the blind men and the elephant comes, how blind they are. And it's not just the blind people get a partial view of the elephant, they fight over it as well. It's kind of a weird humor to that passage, because the king has arranged this. He's told all of his men to gather up all the people blind from birth and have them, as he says, show them an elephant. And, he sh and this person shows one part of the elephant to some of the blind people, another part of the elephant to others. And they ask him, have you seen the elephant? And the blind people say, yes, we've seen the elephant. What's it like? And so they talk about the different parts they saw. 
and then they start fighting. And the fact that they're fighting over it that gives the king a lot of pleasure. It's kind of a sick pleasure, but that's the way people are. We fight over so many trivial things and useless things simply because we don't see the whole picture. That's one thing that sparks a sense of sangweg in the Buddha. The other is the way that people want to do things that just keep causing more and more suffering for themselves. There are the women in there who want to have children and grandchildren. One woman wants to have as many children and grandchildren as there are people in the city of Sawati. And the Buddha asks her, would you ever be free from funerals? People are dying all the time, so she decides maybe it's not so good. There's a woman who had a seven-year pregnancy, and after she gave birth to the child, the child was able to speak to Sarabhuta. She was so proud of the child that the Buddha noticed that she was just filled with rapture. So he asked her, would you like more children like that, another child like that? And she said, yes, I'd like seven more. And so the Buddha exclaims a verse on heed heedlessness. In the cases of boys and teenagers, the little boys tormenting animals, the teenagers getting into big fights, this calls forth. An exclamation from the Buddha. In some cases, he actually speaks to the boys. Says, "Look, if if you're afraid of pain, why are you causing pain to others?" There's a story of Malika and King Vasenadi in the palace. Where he is a king, you'd think that he'd be able to get somebody to say that, like his his queen, to say that she loved him more than she loved herself. But Malika can't say that. She said, "No, look, I don't love anybody more than myself. How about you?" Of course, the king says he doesn't love anybody more than himself. That's the end of that scene. So the king goes down to see the Buddha, and the Buddha comments on how what the queen said was right. But then the exclamation that he gives is that if you search in all directions, you'll never find anybody you love more than yourself, in the same way other people are fiercely in love with themselves. So as you keep this in mind, you should never harm anyone else. A good lesson for a king. Sometimes the Buddha's Sangwaka comes from seeing his own monks misbehaving. Here they have the chance to practice. And what do they do? They spend their time talking about which king is the better king, the more powerful king, which craft is the best craft, or just chattering away, no purpose at all. That causes the Buddha to exclaim as well. So you look around you, you see there are lots of things that would cause an awakened one to have a strong sense of sangwega. But there are also cases where he's inspired. But the largest chunk of verses has to do with him seeing his own disciples, practicing well, gaining results. That gives him a sense of inspiration. One story in particular, a group of monks come to visit the monastery where he's staying, and as they're putting their things away, they're chatting up with their friends who they hadn't seen for a long time. And the Buddha says to Ananda, who are those monks over there chattering like fishermen with a catch of fish? So he calls them into his presence, and then he sends them away. He says, I don't want monks like you around here. So the leader of the monks takes them off to a quiet place and says, look, the, the fact that the Buddha chased us away was for our own good. He wanted to chastise us so that we'd gain a sense of sangwega. So they practice hard. And in that rains retreat, they all become arahants. And so they come back, and this time the Buddha's exclamation has to do with their, the brightness of their attainment. So the purpose of all these stories is to give you a sense of heedfulness. And if we're not careful about how we look for happiness, if we're not careful about our behavior, we just go around and around and around without stop. The Dharma is available, and there's so many people out there who want to change the Dharma, and they want to erase the Dharma. In a lot of ways, you can't stop it. The Buddha didn't go out and stop those sectarians. But he did say that you can practice. You can make sure that your practice, at least, 
is a light to others. So it's good to keep the, the perspective of an awakened one in mind, because it gives us the sense of the dangers that come when we don't practice and of the, the wonders that can happen when we do. The Adana also contains all those exclamations about the nature of Nibbana being unmade, un, unbecome, totally free from suffering, a totally different dimension. The kind of thing that would make an even a Buddha exclaim. The attainment is that good. So whatever efforts needed in the practice, however much we have to sit through pain and deal with distractions and all the other hard parts of the practice, remember it's always more than worth it. Let that thought give you energy. <laughs>